Welcome to class number two in the study, in the original Hebrew of Sefer Shev and Mitzvah Hashem. We are currently in volume one, the very beginning, in the Mavoy, in the uh, preface to the Sefer. We are on page 20, the second paragraph, page 20, and in our last class, um, we brought down various different achroinim, different opinions of the um, past century that explain the Rambam as far as the acceptance and the status of a law abiding, that is, one who accepts upon himself to keep the seven mitzvahs, a non Jew who accepts to keep the seven universal Noahide commandments. Um, what is his status if he accepts them? Be, even if they're God-given, but he didn't accept them um, because God gave them at the revelation at Sinai through Moses. So we pretty much brought down several, three opinions. And the question is, is such a person called Chassid uh, Masoilam, and he can't be called a Ger according to the Rambam, but what is his status? So we had the... Um, the Chidushe Hagriz was the one that we just dealt with, Reb Velvo Brisker. And he basically learns in the Rambam that in order for a non-Jew to fulfill his obligation and to give him a right to live, he needs, it's crucial, he must accept upon himself to keep the seven because they're given from God through Moses. And otherwise... Yeharik, he shall be put to death. That's his explanation. And now we are going to go further and question that and refute that. Page 20, second paragraph. Avul biur hanal bedivrei harambam kashe mikama taimim. However, the above mentioned explanation in the words of the Rambam is difficult for a number of reasons. Aleph. Firstly, Lashana Rambam, the language of the Rambam, and to quote, Vehu, she ekabel oisan, viyase oisan, that this individual, this non Jew, needs to accept them upon himself and do them to keep them, mipnei shetziva boyna kadosh baruchu batayra, because God, the Holy One, blessed be He, has commanded in the Torah, and has informed us, through our teacher Moses, that the Bnei Noyach originally, from beforehand, before the giving of the Torah, were commanded to keep them. Harei, that's the end of the quote. So Harei, behold, from the Rambam's language, it's pretty clear that the original commandment to the Bnei Noyach still exists. So one really should not learn, as we explained in last class, that they do, some do learn that way, that until the giving of the Torah, the non-Jewish world was commanded and had to do them because God gave six to Adam and then reinstituted them after the flood and gave a seventh to Noah. Once the Torah was given, now there becomes a completely new obligation and everything that God said until that point is, so to say, absolved and erased and void. And now those same seven have been reinstated and that's why they have to keep them. That explanation doesn't really fit into the words of the Rambam. Because the Rambam says that part of the message that God is giving through Moses is that they have to keep those mitzvahs that they were already commanded. And that is from the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach in Lukutei Sichas, volume 26, page 133, as you see in note 12.
So from the Rambam's language, the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach points out that the implication apparently is that the commandment to the Bnei Noyach from before is not void. And that which we find in the words of the sages that there was a point that once the non-Jewish world was not keeping them, so then God undid them and made them permissible that one does not need to keep the seven. And that all changed only at the giving of the Torah. But until then, they were optional. So that doesn't seem that the Rambam is following that halacha. You know, there's many things that Midrash says, uh, that the Talmud says, or the various different allegorical explanations on different levels um, can say, but the question is, what is actual halacha? The Rambam, Maimonides, in his Mishnah Torah, is not a commentary on Talmud, nor on the written law, on the Bible. It is based on all of the above, halacha. The Rambam pulls out and gleans what is the legal ruling, what is the law of all the do's and all the don'ts. And therefore, the Rambam seemingly does not hold of that idea that God has ever um, absolved the um, obligation of keeping the seven. The Afalpi, and even though Shepashut Bagamara of Arishainim Hanal, Shatsivo Yadain Kayam, according to the Talmud and according to the early commentators that we mentioned previously, the commandment still exists to the non Jewish world. And the way we explained it is that what did God take away? Not that He made it now optional. Optional in the sense that they now get less reward. That the world at large, until the point where he took away the obligation, they were commanded to do it. And if one is commanded, so that comes with a positive and a negative, with a plus and a minus. On the positive, uh, on the negative side, one is held accountable and liable to be punished if he transgresses. Certainly if he transgresses uh, willingly and knowingly. But together with that, he gets a greater reward. And we have a rule in the Torah which applies across the board. For Jews, there's no reason to assume that it does not apply to non-Jews. And that is that one who is commanded to do anything is greater than one who's not commanded to do that particular commandment. Meaning, if an individual is commanded, falls into the category, that they are commanded by God to do a certain mitzvah, certain uh, ritual or commandment. And then you have someone else who's not commanded but does it voluntarily. The one who's doing it because they're commanded to do so will get a much greater reward than the one who does it voluntarily. Now, uh, typically what we speak about when we bring up this subject and that rule would be, for example, women, Jewish women, fulfilling a mitzvah, a commandment that they are technically exempt from keeping. Women are exempt from keeping as a rule, with exceptions, but as a rule, positive time-bound commandments, which are a lot of many, many mitzvahs. For example, um, the mitzvah of reciting the certain paragraphs from the Bible daily, known as Kriyas Shema, reciting the Shema Yisroel. So that is a positive commandment, and that applies every morning and every night. There's a set time for it. There's the earliest point, there's the latest point in the morning, there's the earliest point, there's the latest point at night. Women need not fulfill that commandment. It's a positive, time-bound commandment. It applies only to Jewish men. That's one example. Another example would be dwelling in a sukkah, 
in that booth, in the hut, uh, Mansukis, on the festival of tabernacles. That is a, t- a positive commandment. It's not that one is not allowed to eat a full meal outside of the sukkah. It's that one is required to eat it in the sukkah. It's a positive commandment. The verse states, and you shall dwell in the sukkahs for seven days. It's positive and it's time bound. It's not any seven days. It's particularly seven days from the 15th of the Hebrew month that we call Tishrei for seven days. Women are exempt. They do not need to step foot in the sukkah. They don't need to eat at all or anything in the sukkah during the festival of sukkahs. For that matter, I'll give you two more examples. There are many. Um, speaking of sukkahs, shaking the lulu venetro, taking the four species, the palm branch, known as the lulav, the special citron, known as the esroig, the hadasim, those are the um, myrtles, and the aravis, a specific type of a willow. We bind them together, three of them, and then pick it up, say the blessing, pick up the esrig in a certain way, hold them all upright, and hold them together. And then customarily shake them in various directions. That is a mitzvah. It's a positive commandment, and women are exempt, because it is only to be done on a very particular day, on the 15th day of the month that we call Tishrei. Therefore, women don't have to do it. And one more example. Shoifar, to hear the sounding of the shoifar, of the special horn blown on Rosh Hashanah on the first day of the Jewish calendar year, first day of the month of Tishrei, and we sound the shoifar. It's a mitzvah, you have to hear certain sounds, the tkiah, and then the sound in the middle, and then the tkiah. Women are exempt from the mitzvah of shoifar. They don't have to go to synagogue to hear the shoifar. No one has to sound the shoifar for them. It is not a commandment that women are obligated to keep. Jewish women don't have to hear the shoifar. Having said that, if a woman chooses on her own voluntarily to fulfill a mitzvah which she's exempt from keeping, for example, she wants to say the Shema, and she says the Shema in the morning or at night, or she wants to eat a meal in the sukkah. Or she wishes to shake the lulav. Or she wants to hear the shayfer on Rosh Hashanah. She can, by all means, do those mitzvahs. And she gets some reward for it. However, besides the fact that if she doesn't do it, she's able to, and she has the opportunity, and she seemingly has no good excuse why she isn't, And she chooses not to, whether you want to call it laziness or a lack of of care, whatever it may be. She gets no punishment whatsoever. She hasn't transgressed anything. There's nothing wrong with that. No punishment. And if she chooses to do the mitzvah, she gets reward. However, not the same reward as the Jewish man that is obligated to do these things and does them. Because one who's commanded and does it gets a greater reward. And I don't want to get into the reasons, philosophically. There are several reasons and explanations given. That's the fact, though. So now, getting back to the topic at hand, similarly, a non-Jew, prior to the giving of the Torah, had originally seven commandments. Once we say that God took away those commandments, so to say, and made them voluntary, it doesn't mean that no longer do they exist and is one fulfilling a commandment, but rather the reward for keeping them is now a different category. It's much less of a reward for those that choose to keep them. It's as one who is doing something that they are technically exempt from keeping. Avul etzam achiyuv nishar. However, the very com- obligation and commandment, that remains. It's just that the reward was reduced. We are on the top of page 21. Mikol Malkoim, nonetheless, imat if the previous commandment prior to the giving of the Torah, 
lenient schar batel, as far as reward is concerned, has been nullified. Lama tzari chateira lo idiyam davar zeh shemikoidim nitztavu. So why is it important? Why does the Teira need to inform them that they were commanded to keep these prior to the giving of the Teira? If that was taken away to the extent that they don't have the same reward, why not just actually start from fresh and just start now and say that they are commanded to keep these commandments? That's it. There are 613 given to the Jews and to the nations of the world. There are these seven. Why is it important for the Teira to point out and stress that these seven that you're being given now, you've already been commanded from before. The Yoyser Mizeh, and more than that, furthermore, Lama Tzrichim Heim L'Kabal Al-Atzman Mipnei Shetziv HaShem Al-Dei Moshe V'Yidi HaShem B'nei Noach M'Koydim Nitztavu Bohen Why is it crucial for the B'nei Noach to accept it upon themselves be, be that in, a, in a sense of because they're commanded by God through Moses and he has informed us, that the Bnei Noach were commanded to do so beforehand. In other words, there seems to be three pieces to make a complete, absolute, proper acceptance for the non-Jew to keep the seven. There seems to be three points. They're God-given through Moses who informed them that they had already been commanded from before to keep them. Miloshana Rambam from the language of the Rambam, it's clear that this is part of what Moshe needs to inform them in the Torah, and it's part of their acceptance, that detail, that they're being informed that they have already accepted these, or commanded, rather, from before. But again, why is it important for them to know this? Why is it important for them to accept this upon themselves? This new acceptance? Why does it have to be linked with the fact that they were already commanded from before? Why can't that be mm-hmm. dropped? Why is that so important? They do know, they don't know. Why does that need to be part of the package that they're being given and it's presented to them and that's how they have to, have to accept it? Lefi has berhanal. According to the above mentioned explanation, Tziva Meisha Rabbeinu al pi agvura lakuf es bnei noyach lekaim sheva mitzvei sehim. So Meisha Rabbeinu Moses was commanded, based on the word of God, to compel all of the bnei noyach, all of the people, to fulfill their seven commandments. Hainu meaning. In other words, the commandment is that the Jewish people need to compel all of the nations, the entire world, to become Geirim Teishavim, to become a Ger Teishav. That's what a Ger Teishav is. A Ger Teishav means that he accepts it upon himself because it's God given through Moses. Well, that means that according to the Rambam, that's what everyone needs to be. However, this situation of compelling them to accept it is only possible when the Goyim are under the ruling and the jurisdiction and the governing of the Jewish people. Like a slave that was acquired, that was bought, that was possessed by a Jew. So now this Eved Kenani becomes under the control of the Jew. So he now can force this Eved to accept the mitzvah such. Or another case, alternatively, would be the Yifas Toyar case, which we discussed. That's the segue of how the Ramam gets into discussing the seven. The seven. That you have the um, wartime when the Jewish soldier finds and takes by force one of the non-Jewish women and brings her back home and goes through the whole process and possibly 
will marry her after 30 days and will force her to become Jewish, not by choice, but by force, and to accept upon her to keep the seven. Or, well, I, I don't want to go into all the details. So, he can force her to remain with him and then she has to accept upon herself to keep the seven. So she's not really Jewish, otherwise she'd have to keep the 613. Or nations that are under our jurisdiction and they are subjugated to the Jewish people because we went out to war to conquer them. It was an, uh, what we call a, uh, an optional war. It wasn't a commandment war, it wasn't a war to conquer land of the actual Eretz Yisrael, but we just wanted to expand our borders. And in those cases, we are commanded, in, to those people, that we can force them, we are commanded to force them to become Ger otherwise we put them to death. So the Eved that refuses to accept Sheva Mitzvah Bnei Noyach, we put him to death. And so on. The nations that we've conquered, and they have a choice. Either accept these seven, and if you do accept, then the new Kamagir Teishav. Avalosh and Rambam, we have a problem here. Because that sounds like what the Rambam is telling us. That you need to compel the people. You need to force them. Who can you force? Only those that you can force. However, take a close look at the language of the Rambam. And he says, Lakuf es kol ha'ilam. All the inhabitants of the world. All the people of the world. noyach. To accept the commandments that were commanded to the sons of Noah. Mashmoya poshut, the simple meaning of these words, that this commandment is not limited. It's not only to the Afas Toyar, to the Eved, to the nations that we conquered. No. Vinitstavinu, and we the Jews have been commanded, to force them in any event, in every case, to fulfill their commandments. Meaning there's this campaign that the Jewish people have to go out and seek every person on the planet. And every human being needs to be, quote-unquote, forced to keep the seven. But according to the above-mentioned explanation, this commandment that the Jews have to force is very limited by its by 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 its technical nature. It's only when it's possible to actually force them. Meaning only when we have a strong hold over them. Again, like the examples we gave, the Eved, the Yafastoya, or the nation that we conquered. So, which is it? On the one hand, we're saying that according to the explanation we gave, it's only when the Jewish people have the opportunity. When do they have the opportunity? If the guy has no choice, really, because he's under the Jewish ruling. And we can tell him, either or. But we don't have the power to do that to nations that have nothing to do with us. But according to the Rambam, simple, straightforward reading, it sounds like the mitzvah is for the Jewish people to compel, to get everybody to keep these seven. Noistaf loze, kosher lahasim es shito yisarambam varamban. So in addition to the problem that we just posed, we also have a problem um, what do we do? How can we put together the two opinions of the Rambam, Maimonides, and the Ramban, Nachmanides? Lefi divrei ha-Ramban v'ritva. 
According to the words of the Ramban and the Ritva, Hatsoyrech Shegir Toishov Yakabu Bifne based in Israel. The necessity for a Ger Toishov to accept the seven in front of a Jewish court, Mishum Shomad Vitiran, is because, as the sages say, that Hashem removed their obligation. He absolved the obligation. So therefore, any individual now who wants to keep them has to personally accept it because internationally, the mitzvahs have been removed at that point. Therefore, any individual who wishes to accept them upon, them, upon him and to, so to say, be rewarded as a real comm- commandee, he needs to step out of the uh, general public and he needs to accept it formally because if not, the given is that the people of the world no longer are obligated in that sense as they were. Problem is, that way of explaining it, according to the Ramban, what does that have to do with that acceptance? What does that have to do with the Torah and Moses. Is it insufficient for this person, this Ben Noyach, to accept them upon himself formally in front of the Jewish court because they're God given to Adam and Noyach? Why would that not be sufficient? And in truth, Nowhere in their words of the Ramban nor, nor the Ritva is it even hinted to this idea that the Rambam says that they need to accept it because God gave it through Moses. They don't mention anything about Moses. In other words, according to the Ramban, originally there was a time that everybody had to keep these seven and they were commanded. And then because people weren't keeping them, so, so to say God removed them and made them no longer obligatory. And now the entire world is not in the same category as they were. Now, any individual that would like to be pious and would like to step up and and fall into the original category and accept him upon himself as as obligatory, wonderful, all the power to him, but he needs to do that. But they don't mention anything about the link of God commanding it through Moses. So that's one question. What's, what's a Gertoshev? According to the Rambam, it seems to be that he can only be categorized properly as a Gertoshev if he accepts the seven in front of a Jewish court and clearly his acceptance is because God commanded us through Moses. And according to the Ramban, it seems like it's enough to accept them in front of the Jewish court. Nothing to do with bringing Moses into the picture. Avogam imnoi medoshita sarambam kibiur harambam However, even if we were to say that the opinion of the Rambam is as the Ramban's explanation in the categorization of the concept of the term of Ger Toishov, the Hainu meaning that it's because God removed and he absolved them from the obligation of keeping them. So now Ben Noach needs to accept it again. Let's even say that the Rambam would agree with that. That the reason why one needs to formally accept it is because God absolved the obligation. In order for him to be able to be called a Ger he now has to accept it. According to the Rambam, even more than that, According to the Rambam, even if you want to say that he agrees with the Ramban, in essence, that the reason why there needs to be an acceptance, but the Rambam goes much further, and the Ramban, as we said, makes no mention of the fact that during the formal acceptance, he needs to mention that he's accepting it upon himself, because God gave it through Moses. And the Rambam does say that. So again, what's all that? So can we reconcile the Rambam and the Ramban? And let's really understand what does the Rambam mean? 
Does it apply to all the people of the world? And why is it so crucial to mention that it's through Moses? And as we mentioned at the beginning, why is it important to also point out that they were originally commanded to do these? Adain Kosher. So even if you want to say that the Rambam holds like the Ramban, that the reason why he needs to accept it formally is because they were absolved, we still have a problem. Because according to the explanation of the above mentioned achreinim, such as the Gris, what the commandment that Moses was given from God is to compel everybody to do what? To become a Ger Toishav, no less. That's the commandment. The commandment is to see to it that every person becomes in the category of a Ger Toishav. And to this too, there is not even a hint in the words of the Ramban and the Ritva. And likewise, um, the author here is saying that it really logically doesn't, doesn't seem to make any sense that there is a concept of forcing upon people to become a Ger Toishav, as he will write further on later. The main point is, the Rambam is so clear, and yet, where do we find in the Rambam that there is an obligation to force anybody to become a Ger Toishov? He says there's an obligation for the Jewish people to force all the people of the world to keep the seven. He doesn't say that they're forced to become a Ger Toishov. But according to the Rambam explanation, once someone does accept it properly, they're a Ger Toishav. So, which is it? Are we obligated, according to the Rambam, to make them into a Ger Toishav? Because it doesn't say that anywhere. Ader To the contrary. Midik to Gloshna Rambam. From the specific language of the Rambam, if, you, if you're going to be very careful and look at the words and analyze them properly... You can actually differentiate. That which Meisher Rabbeinu was commanded by God to force all the people in the world to accept upon themselves these commandments of Bnei Noyach and anyone who will not accept them shall be put to death. It's not that they have to accept it only because they were commanded in the Torah through Moses. That's the ideal situation. On the contrary, the Ramam is saying we have to force everybody to accept them. Not necessarily to be on the highest level and accept them in the best way. And likewise, again, nowhere does the Rambam say that the Jewish people were commanded and are obligated to force anybody to become a Ger Toishav. Just like no, no non-Jew has to be circumcised. If he's not an Eved, and he's not becoming property of a Jew, and he's not going through any type of Gerus, he doesn't have to be circumcised. It's only if he accepted upon himself to be circumcised, then he has to, because he accepted it upon himself. And this is why the Rambam was so meticulous in his wording. And one who does accept them, he is called and referred to as a Ger everywhere. And then the Rambam says, and he needs to accept it upon himself in front of three proper Jews. The Rambam didn't write, the Rambam didn't write it in the other order. He didn't say that he has to accept it upon himself in front of three chaverim, and then he's called the Ger Toishav everywhere. No. He says one who accepts them is a Ger Toishav, and he needs to accept it in front of three chaverim. The Rak it's just that, and again to quote the Rambam, 
One who is careful to keep the seven. Behold, such a person is from the pious or the righteous of the nations of the world, and he has a share in the world to come. But the condition is, in order for him to fall into the category of in order for him to have a share in the world to come, he has to accept upon, him, upon himself because they're God given in the Torah through Moses. What this means to say, the true acceptance of the Bnei Noyach to keep these seven, the ideal and true acceptance is because and through Moses. As far as they, the Bnei Noyach, being able to merit the reward of having a share in the world to come. So for their own benefit, for their reward, they have to accept it in the full sense, meaning because it was commanded through Moses. But that's nothing, that doesn't have anything to do with the obligation or the responsibility of the Jew to force them. The Jew need not force them to accept it because they, it was, it, it's through Moses. To the extent that if not, they should be put to death. No. And that which we Jews are commanded to force them. It is sufficient to force them to accept these seven because they were commanded through Noah. And true, if they accept it like that, they will not be in the category of Chasidei Moisailam. And that's fine for us Jews. They're not obligated to. In other words, the commandment, the so-called campaign, what the Rambam is telling us about, for the Jewish people to do, is to get everybody to accept upon themselves to keep the seven, because God commanded. That's it. And if one does that, is he a Gertoshev? Absolutely not. Is he in the category of Chassid de No. Does he have a share of the world to come? No. But I, as a Jew, have fulfilled my obligation. I don't have to take them further. That's enough. I don't have to force them to be above and beyond that. On their own, every and any individual who wishes to go further and have a better and a closer and a deeper relationship with God and have more reward in the world to come and be categorized as Hasidim Oilam or Gertoshev, by all means. But then you need to accept it because God commanded in the Torah through Moses. But as far as the Jews are concerned, it's okay if you accept it because they're God given through Noah. Safe Dover. So to sum it up, at the end. So the, that which the Ramban says, that the necessity for the people to accept it upon themselves, they have to have a new acceptance because the previous commandment that existed prior to the giving of the Torah, God has absolved and removed and abolished. So therefore, every individual now needs a new acceptance. That approach, which is the Ramban, has no hint in the words of the Ramban. The Ramam talks about accepting, talks about the Jews forcing them to accept it. Nowhere do we find this explanation. And that which the Ramam does write, that the Jews have to force them. And that which the Bnei Noyach need to accept it because they're given through Moses. So then that's not even hinted to in the words of the Ramban at all. So we have a problem over here. The Ramban versus the Rambam. They both talk about the acceptance of the non-Jew accepting the seven. However, they seem to take a very different approach. Let's see footnote 19. Bottom of the page. We're on page 23. Footnote 19. 
<clears throat> All right, we have over here another argument between the Ramban and the Rambam as to how to categorize what are the titles of Ben Noyach and Ger Toishov. According to the Ramban, he explains that a Ben Noyach is a non Jew that fulfills, that keeps the seven on his own. And he's not in a very complete or true or great level because he didn't accept them upon himself as an absolute necessity and a must. But the complete acceptance, the perfect acceptance, that takes him out of being a Ben Noyach and gives him the new title called Eger Toshav. That's the Ramban. So one who keeps them is Ben Noyach and one who accepts them properly is a Ger Toshav. However, according to the Rambam, when he describes the obligations of Ben Noyach, he calls him a Ben Noyach. And when he wants to describe the higher form, the one who accepted them because they're God given through Moses, he calls them Chasid of Umeso Oilam and not Ger Toishav. The Rambam, you know, it's what the, seemingly what the Ramban calls Ger Toishav, the Rambam says that's from Chasid de Umeso Oilam. Because a Ger Toishav is not a description which you attribute to the higher form of the fulfillment and his adherence and obedience in keeping the seven. But rather, it's more of a technical title of a non-Jew that has certain rights. Such as living in the land of Israel and that the Jewish people are obligated to support and take care of him. So according to the Rambam, in a sense, the highest form, the highest status of a non-Jew would be as if, if he's from Hasidei Umay So'ilam. He need not be a Ger Toishav. If he's a Ger Toishav, he gets more rights than a regular Hasid of Umay So'ilam. But th- th- that's for his own benefit. But as far as his adherence to and his uh, observance of and therefore his title, according to the Rambam, Hasidei Umay So'ilam is good enough. And according to the Ramban, no, that would make him a Ger Toishov. It's either Ben Noyach or Ger Toishov. <clears throat> Further, towards the bottom of 23, Dalot. Oit kashal bir hanal. Another problem with the above mentioned explanation in the words of the Rambam that the Achreinim gave, such as the Griz. Im noimar, if we were to say, shachiu varisha in laadam v'noyach, nechlash, that the original commandment given by God to Adam, the first man, and to Noyach, has been weakened. And therefore it is necessary for a new uh, obligation, and therefore each individual needs to accept it upon himself in order to become obligated. If so, so it should have been clarified in the words of the Rambam, the obligation upon the Bnei Noyach themselves. In other words, the Ramam should speak to the non-Jewish world and tell them that they have an obligation to accept upon themselves to become a Ger Toishov, each individual. And even without the Jewish people compelling them. So yes, it's true, of course, that the Rambam's Mishne Torah his magni opus is written to and for the Jew, obviously. And therefore, he's writing halachas for the Jews. That's fine. But just as he devotes several chapters to give the details of the Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noyach and all the prohibitions, what exactly are B'nai Noyach obligated to keep? So too, the Rambam should see at some point there 
to mention to the Bnei Noyach, to the international world of the non-Jewish world, that, hey, you know, you need to accept this upon yourselves, every one of you. He doesn't say that. He's clearly addressing the Jews. It's the mitzvah for the Jew. It's the obligation for the Jew to compel everybody to keep them. But according to their explanation, seemingly, in order for them to fall into the category of becoming obligated, which they need to be, it's crucial for the non-Jew to accept it. Because he wants to go back to the original states that they were in until God removed the obligation and made it, so to say, optional. <clears throat> and likewise, the fact that according to their explanation, the concept and the term now of Ger Toishav is actually a law which has to do with force. It's a compelling thing. That the Jews forced the Bnei Noyach to be Ger Toishav. And on the contrary, the simple reading of the Talmud, the idea of a Ger Toishav, according to the Talmud, wherever it speaks about a Ger Toishav, it comes out pretty clear that on the contrary, it's something which is absolutely optional. It's this non-Jew who wants to be a Ger Toishav. And then we Jews are allowed to accept him in certain times. That's all. But it's not that we're supposed to seek out and our goal is, the Jewish people's goal is to make everybody a Ger Toishav. Not at all. That's not even our hidden agenda. There's no such thing. The guy who wants to become a Ger Toishav, it's not Kfiyasi, which means a forceful rule, but it's he's not vusi, as the words he's using. It means it's um, optional completely. Duk Biloshna Rambam, Hilchis Isure Bia, Perekudal, Halochazayan, and Ches. So now he tells us like this Take a close look, and you'll find that this is exactly how it fits into the words of the Rambam. In the laws of forbidden relations, chapter 14, laws 7 and 8. Mash masham, over there it's implied, shekol anidoin, that the whole discussion here, hu shonu mekabli noisan, veloi mashma meyoilo musa kviabadover. It's only when and how the Jewish community, the Jewish court, is to accept these non Jews as a ger toishav. That's the whole discussion, but nothing at all about ever. Forcing them or compelling them to become a Ger Taishav doesn't exist. Ukishar Gerus, Gerit Tzedek, Shein Koifin Klau. Just like it's the same word, Ger Taishav. Same idea as the more common term today of a Ger, which is a convert, someone who wants to become a complete Jew, not a Ger Taishav, which is not Jewish. He wants to become a Jew. So the term for that is a Ger. Or the rabbinic literature calls it a ger tzedek, the righteous ger, to differentiate between that and the ger toishav. So we surely do not seek converts. We're not proselytizing. And it's something which completely has to come from themselves. And it's completely their interest, the non-Jew who's becoming Jewish, and it's they're voluntarily doing so. Same thing as the Ger Toishav. By no means are we proselytizing or trying to seek out uh, that an Andrew should become a Ger Toishav. According to the Rambam. It's Mekablin. We accept him. Same thing. Ger Tzedek. We accept him. If he's sincere and he's ready to accept everything, so then there's the details of how we go about the process. But by no means did we ever try to encourage an Anju to become a Ger Tzedek. And likewise, the simple, straightforward meaning of the Rambam in the laws of kings, which is what we're discussing at hand. We just brought in Hisri Bia to bring out the point. But getting back to our halachas, where he speaks about the seven mitzvahs in the laws of kings, 
that if this individual non-Jew wanted to accept upon himself, if he wants to become a Gerteshav, he needs to accept upon himself formally to keep the seven in front of the three Chaveirim. But if it would have been, indeed, as the Ramban seems to say, that it was because the Jew has the obligation to compel them, it would have nothing to do with his acceptance. But rather, it would have to do with our forcing him in front of a, a based in, like all other gerim. But not what he will accept upon himself. All right. 24. Third line. Belukute Siches. So again, Belukute Siches is the um, official name of the volumes of the edited official talks or essays of the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach. And they're called the Kutei Sichas, a compilation, a gathering of talks. So, in the Kutei Sichas, which means, of course, in the words, in the edited words, in the official words of the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach, Mivair he explains, Shehadin Lakuf is called Boiho Ilom. That this rule of this law of the, that the Ramba mentions, that the Jew has to compel all the people in the world, Noiveya Mikach, it's an expression, it's an extension from Shemitzvois Bnei Noyach Ksuvim Batera, Umeish Rabbeinu Hoidiyanu Livnei Yisrael, Velo Yoidiyam Livnei Noyach. It comes out the way that the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach explains it in the Rambam, is because the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noyach are written in the Torah and Moshe Rabbeinu informed us, the Jewish people. It's not because the non-Jews were informed. Because remember, part of what we said was that why don't we find that the Rambam speaks to the non-Jews and tells them that they should accept it. No. The acceptance is something that the Jews have to go out and get them to accept. Because we, the Jews, were informed. Because God commanded that the non-Jews have to keep these seven. This is a commandment in the Torah. And he informed us so this obligates the Jewish people who are the only recipients of the Torah and we're the ones that are commanded in the Torah. So the Jew has to fulfill this obligation, this command, as he has to keep any other commandment. So the same God, the one and only, in his Torah that he gave exclusively to the Jewish people, just as he commanded the Jew, do this, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do that. Part of that Torah is that we were informed that we, the Jewish people, need to see to it to get the non-Jewish world, to get everybody in the world to keep their seven. The oid, and furthermore, kol achiyuvim alo enoshus mitzada boirei yesh limshaychu zelozeh. All of the obligations that all of mankind have from the Creator all have an interconnection one to the other. Vilochena, therefore, Chiyuv Sheva Mitzvis Bnei Noyach, the obligation of keeping these seven, Chilek Michlolus Torah, is part of the Torah in general. In other words, we can't split. We can't say, well, look, God gave the Torah to the Jewish people and he exclusively gave it to the Jewish people. Fine. But then he gave the non-Jewish world their seven commandments. So they were commanded somehow. And that has nothing to do with the Jewish people. We have 613, they have seven. They don't have to do ours, we don't have to do theirs. It doesn't work like that. Because there's one God who commanded. So just as, he's not saying this, but just for the sake of clarification, 
just as within the Jewish nation themselves, if there's a certain commandment which only applies to a certain individual, like we spoke earlier, men have obligations that women don't have. That doesn't mean that the women have nothing to do with those mitzvahs. They don't have to keep them. They're not commanded. Or for that matter, certain mitzvahs are only for the kohen, for the priest, or for the high priest, or for the Levite, or for the king, only one individual. It's, you, you can't separate and say those commandments have nothing to do with the rest of the Jewish people. The actual fulfillment of that commandment, true, I don't do. But they're all linked together. So too, if mankind, if the non-Jewish world, if the 70 nations, as we call them, are commanded by God to keep certain commandments, of course they go back to the Torah. Of course they're part of the Torah. Therefore, it lies upon the Jewish people, the recipients of the Torah, to keep them. What do we mean to keep them? They're only for the non-Jews. To see to it, the Jew has the responsibility, the obligation, to see to it that those that do have to keep them, keep them. In other words, to do as the Rambam puts it, that the Jews are commanded to compel or to force all the people in the world to keep their commandments. As we pointed out above, Zehu Hasiba, this is in fact the reason, Shadinze Mivur Barambam Soif Perek Ches Milchas Melochim, Lifne Piru Tchiuf Shev Mitzvah Spinoach Beperek Tes, Kihu Mitzvah Is Yisrael. Everything in the Rambam is so precise and so exact. Where did he see fit, the Rambam, to place this ruling that the Jewish people have an obligation to force all the people in the world to accept upon themselves and keep these seven? He puts it at the end of chapter 8 before he gets into all of the seven mitzvahs, which are in chapter 9. But also for the Ben Noyach, this is important. Because the fulfillment of their seven commandments. In truth, comes from the fact that God commanded it in the Torah. And the truth of Torah was given through Moses. That's why the emphasis through Moses. <clears throat> Meaning, it is insufficient to say that it's a God-given commandment, end of story. That's insufficient. To say God commanded Adam, God commanded Noyach, and I'm a Ben Noyach, and that's why I gotta do it. That's insufficient. Now that God revealed himself at Sinai, everything changed. Now the world has it's a Torah world. True, it was given exclusively to the chosen people, to the Bnei Yisrael, to the Jewish nation. But now, the whole world is a different world. And the Jewish people now are obligated to have all the people of the world keep their seven. And the people of the world, from their end and from their perspective, their acceptance needs to be because it's from the Torah. And in order for it to truly be from the Torah, the way that God set it up is that the Torah is given to the Jewish nation, it's given to the world through Moses, the truth of the Torah. Torah tziva lanu Moshe. 
the verse states, the Torah was commanded to us by Moses. Whereas the first Mishnah in Pirkei Ovis, in what they call Ethics of the Fathers, the first Mishnah, which gives us the chain of the, tr- of the transmission of the Torah, starts off, Moshe kibel Torah misinai. Moses received the Torah from Sinai, Umisara, and he gave it on to the next, and the next, and the next. So it's crucial that Moshe is in the picture. And therefore, before the Rambam goes into the details of telling us about the commandments and all of that, before he goes into that, he's giving this introduction because this introduction is not only important for the Jew, it's important for the Ben Noyach. It's sort of introducing the commandee to the commandor. Who is commanding you? It's not enough to say, God Almighty, the Creator. That's beautiful. That's surely much better than someone who just keeps the seven because they all make so much sense logically. And the guy says, I don't even believe in God and I keep these seven. Well, that's surely better than nothing, but you know, there's nothing. There's not keeping them. And the next step is keeping them because they make sense logically. But that's a very low level. But even keeping them, because the non-Jew believes that they're God-given, and that's who he thinks is the commander, that is not a complete picture. That is insufficient. So the Rambam says, I would like to introduce you to your commander. And the commander is not only the creator, God Almighty. The commander is actually... God Almighty, the Creator, who gave the Torah through Moses. Get it? Now, he moves on to the next chapter and tells you what your commandments are, what the seven are. The simple reading of the Rambam shows us that these two laws come out from one Point from the very same point. In other words, like this. The point is this one point is that Moses was commanded in the Torah. Moses has commanded us. From that comes out two two laws. Aleph a. The true fulfillment of the seven Noahide commandments is specifically because God commanded it in the Torah through Moses. The obligation that the Jewish people have to see to it, to influence or compel or force the Bnei Noyach world, because it's part of the Torah. So it's two different laws, one for the non-Jew, one for the Jew, but they're both coming from the very same point. And that point is that God in the Torah through Moses has commanded. And again, therefore, A, that's the true acceptance, and that's the best way and the highest form and the real ultimate way that a non-Jew should keep the seven. And B, that's why the Jew is obligated to see to it, to get the non-Jew to do it. This obligation that the Jew has to compel everyone to keep these, and if not, he shall be put to death. Do not make the mistake and think, oh, so that's part of one of the seven mitzvahs of dinim, of setting up a court system. In other words, to set up a system that will uphold uphold the six. So you need a court system that if somebody transgresses any one of the six, he's put to death. 
No, that's that that's part of that's dinim. That's not what the Jew is obligated to see to it that the non Jew keeps the law, and if not, he's killed. <laughs> Although, even when it comes to the mitzvah of dinim, of having a court system, we find the capital punishment for a ben noyach that transgresses the seven. The other rabba, on the contrary, as harasan zui misasan, the nevragan are called mitzvah shalem. We're very strict when it comes to the seven mitzvahs and their observance, or the lack thereof, much more than for the Jew to keep his. And the non-Jew is to be put to death for any transgression. And surely, because of this mitzvah of dinim, the non-Jewish court system that was set up by the non-Jews, and the judges are non-Jews, of course they are to see to it to put to death anyone who transgresses any of the seven, any of the other six. That's their obligation. So again, Ubevade Shagam Mitzad Mitzvah's Dinim Tsrichim Basin Shobani Noyah, Lokufes at Sibur Lakaim Sheva Mitzvah. And of course, the basting, the court of the Bnei Noyach has to force the entire non-Jewish community to keep the seven. Whatever it takes. But this that the Rambam says that the Jewish people have to force the non-Jews to keep the seven and if not, to put, they're put to death or killed, that's beyond the Dinim Mitzvah. It's not a detail, or it's not part of the fulfillment of the mitzvah of dinim that the non Jew has to do, but rather it's part of the commandment in general to keep all seven. Kloima, what we mean to say is as follows Etzem atzivui, the very commandment itself, obligates the Jew to be involved in this. Since the Torah demands of the non-Jews to keep these seven, that means that the Jew has an obligation to see to it to, do, to get them to do it. And to force all the people in the world to do it. To the extent, to force him to the, such an extent that if he doesn't accept it, he shall be put to death. And this which the Rambam says, that whoever does not accept them shall be put to death, is not a punishment through the judicial system. It's not that, oh, so now I'll bring this person to the basin and say, I tried, and I warned him, and I'm a witness, and this guy transgresses the seven. Oh, so he testified in court? Let's put him to death. Like any other time that anybody would be put to death. No, that's not what we're talking about. It's beyond the technical <coughs> um, judgment of, a, of the court system. But rather, as the Ragachover explains, the Rambam's approach that he's to be put to death immediately, even without any proper judgment. Meaning, <clears throat> let's put it this way, in the world of theory, I'm not telling any Jew to go do this, and obviously, you know, in the world of theory, in a perfect world, in a Torah world, the Jew needs to force the non-Jew to keep his seven. And if the non-Jew refuses and does not accept upon himself and transgresses, then the Jew is to put him to death without any proper um, court system. Because it's not like, well, he transgressed one of the seven, so... He's not, he's not accepting them. He's not keeping them. 
that's not accept, that's not acceptable. That's where the Rambam says, if he doesn't accept them, ye hareg, be put to death. So in this case, the fact that he's put to death is not because he transgressed this particular capital offense, any one of the seven. It's because he's refusing to accept upon himself God's commandment at all. And that, there's no tolerance for. So if the Ben Noyak is transgressing any one of the seven true, it's generally speaking a death penalty. But the ones to put him to death would be the court, dinim. You can't take the law into your own hands. And if one neighbor sees someone else transgressing, you can't just get up and shoot him. That's chaos. You have to go to the court, testify. The court calls him in. There's interrogations. They accept the testimony, whatever. And then they put him to death. That's if he is specifically transgressing any one of the seven. Here, if he's not, if he's refusing to accept the mitzvahs, the Jew is trying to, 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 to force him, and he's not accepting it, he's put to death. Venerally. Uh, continues Rabbi Weiner and he says, It appears to me that this is actually explained in the Talmud Tractate Sanhedrin 56b. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Adam Harishoin Loi Nitztave El Al Avoy Dezor Bilvad. And there's one opinion, Rabbi Yehuda says, that first man, Adam Harishoin, was only commanded against idolatry. He was given one commandment. Do not worship anything other than God. Shenemar, and he brings the proof, Vaitzav Hashem Elokim Allah Adam, and Hashem Elokim commanded man. Omar Rav Yehuda, Omar Rav, Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav, Elokim Ani Loi Sekaluluni, Elokim Ani Loi Samiruni, Elokim Ani Yemiroi Aleichem. So he interprets when it says in the verse that Hashem Elokim told man, so it says, Elohim, meaning he's introducing himself to Adam and he's telling Adam, I am God, don't curse me. I am God, don't exchange me. I am God, you are to fear me. Upirish Rashi, and Rashi, the main commentary, he explains, Vayetzav Hashem Elohim, that it says in the verse that Hashem Elohim commanded Meaning, that normally the simple reading of the word is uh, of the verse, Hashem Lekim, and Hashem Lekim, two names of God, commanded. Rashi is explaining that this interpretation in the Talmud is, is, is giving it a bit of a twist. And it's saying, that what did God command about godliness? That he's commanding Adam that you better understand and Vaitzah, I'm commanding you to keep me as God, meaning no one else, nothing else. <laughs> Although the sages in the Talmud want to explain which particular commandments, specifics, Adam, the first man, was commanded. Avoida Zara, Birkas Hashem, Dinim, Kimavur Begamarsham, the prohibition against idolatry, against blasphemy, and the obligation to set up a judicial system, as the Talmud there explains. Mikol Mokim, nonetheless, you know, that's the, what we just read before, that I am a Lakim, don't this, I am a Lakim, don't this, I am a Lakim, those three things that the Talmud says over there are to point out. These, th- th- those three things are to point out these three commandments. But nonetheless, <speaking in Hebrew> but above these particular commandments, as important as they are, <speaking in Hebrew> there's the general commandment, <speaking in Hebrew> meaning to say, the authority of the commander, who am I? <speaking in Hebrew> the first thing is, I am God. That's the first thing that he's commanding him. 
Kabbalah's Dovar Zehu Etzem Atzivui. To accept this, this is the very essence of the commandment. From this come all the details, all the commandments. The first thing is, I am God. The Chomi Sheri Mekabel Etzem Tzivui Zeh. So whoever doesn't accept this very commandment, Barur Meyelov, it is self understood, it's clear. Sheri Mekabel Shum Mitzvah Meyashev Mitzvah is Kemitzvah Likis. He's not accepting any one of the seven Noahide commandments as a godly commandment. The first thing you have to accept is that God is the commander. Nimza. So what comes out from this? Shakol ben Noyach, Shayim Mikabel Esakel Kimitzava Mitzvis. Any Ben Noyach, any human being, a non Jew, who is not accepting. God as the commander of these commandments. He is therefore not truly accepting upon himself the, so to say, yoke of these seven commandments. Truly. And likewise, whoever does not accept upon himself the yoke of the seven commandments. So in truth, he's not accepting upon himself the authority of the commander, meaning God. Vilochain and therefore, top of twenty-seven. So, what is the Ben Noyach obligated to do? He must accept upon himself the yoke of the heavenly authority of God. Lahakir Malchusa is Barich to recognize the sovereignty, the kingship of God, blessed be He. Ulakabal Alatzma Yoel Malchusa Vitzivuyov, and to accept upon Himself the yoke of His rule and all of His commandments. And that is the very commandment itself. Now, next time. In our next class, I'd like to go through footnote 24, where he brings down from, again, from the Kutai Sichas, volume 26, from the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach, that he explains that the obligation for us to force the Goyim, to force the non-Jewish world, um, to what extent is it? And it's, it's, it's very important. Um, like what's the maximum effort and maximum degree that the Jew is to go to to force the non-Jew in order to fulfill his obligation. So we'll leave here. We're up to footnote 24. Otherwise, we're on the top of page 27. So until next time, wishing everyone much success in the obedience, in the observance, and the adherence to and fulfillment of the seven Ochet commandments and spreading the awareness of God and keeping the seven mitzvahs b'nei noyach and making this world not only a better world but the perfect world with the coming and the complete revelation of our righteous Mashiach now.